are watching the VSO Gun Channel, and today is going to be absolutely wild. What I have here is the Foldar, and we have a full video out on this. This is not the subject of today's video. I'm going to draw your attention right here. And what we have looks like a regular everyday grip, but if you look closely, this is labeled Freedom Ordnance FG15. And again, while it spends the majority of its days in the regular everyday grip configuration, it's got some party features baked into it. If I push on this little nub in here, you can see that there's a strut that comes out. Pull on that strut a little bit, it comes all the way out and locks. And then if I give it one more pull, we have an integrated trigger crank in the grip of this rifle. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, I'm gonna tear into this thing here shortly and show you the intricacies of how it actually operates and achieves what it's uh, supposed to do. But really quick, I'll show you uh, the uh, storage conditions. So this is in the locked position. There are three positions. And if you rotate the rifle like this and look at the port side of the rifle, we have a little nub in here and that's how you access it. On either side of the strut, there is a uh, detent groove, so it will lock in either of those positions, it's just a press fit, so it's not like permanently locked or anything like that. So we push on this, the strut comes out, and then if we give a little bit of a pull, we go to the neutral position. And the neutral position, as you would use with regular nomenclature, uh, doesn't engage anything. It just sits there and spins. So the wheels are turning, but it doesn't engage anything. And we take it back to that start position and give it another little pull. And um, it has to be properly lined up because if you, if you don't get it right, you don't want it to accidentally set off a round. If the gears are in the wrong configuration, it can't do that. So uh, that's a, a feature, not a flaw, I would say. Uh, now we are in what I'm going to call the go position. If we take the rifle and put it on fire and we rotate this, there's our discharge. We'll go ahead and work the bolt here. We'll just track it around. Keep going. Next one. And if you leave it in that position after it goes bang, you can hear the reset. There's the reset and then bang. And then it should go after the reset back to nothing. Reset and we are back in the original position. And then of course we erased it, it would go bang again, right? All right, I can hear you guys yelling at me through the camera right now. You got a trigger crank on the side of your gun. Shoot the damn thing. All right, that's what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is um, we're just gonna start out slow firing it and I'm just gonna go around the revolutions maybe twice so like six rounds to get an idea of how it feels i've got a slick sweatshirt on today so i just want to make sure that this is safe so we're going to go ahead and hold the thing on the target and we're just going to go for it of course we have to put the rifle on fire <laughs> okay that, that's that's cool <laughs> all right let's go for it so we're gonna hold the rifle down. <laughs> All right, so initial impressions. I think uh, that this would be uh, considerably useful from like the prone position off of a bipod. And I just so happened to have a bipod, but I left it back at the shop. So what we're gonna do is uh, go get that and uh, set this rifle up for prone shooting. And yes, that means that I'm going to lay down in the mud. Well, you might say, all right, Kurt, well, what's the difference between this and every other trigger crank that we've ever seen? Traditional trigger cranks that bolt to the side of your gun will attack the bow of the trigger. This trigger crank specifically actuates at the bar of the trigger. The way that the FG accomplishes this is if I direct your attention here, that is the central bolt that is used to attach the grip to the gun. Inside of that bolt is a piston that reaches up and touches the trigger bar, which is pretty ridiculous and hilarious actually, but what it accomplishes is make sure that there is direct contact and it can't slip around on the trigger bow. And this thing will work with any trigger that doesn't have a piece of metal between the bolt and the actual trigger bar. For instance, some trigger packs will interfere with this, but most won't. It also comes adjustable with a whole bunch of shims to fit your particular trigger, and of course the tools to adjust it. 
Now I'm gonna take you guys out to the range and show you how this thing operates without the cover on it. So what I have here is a GoPro set up really close to look at the internals. And I'm just gonna crank a couple shots so you guys can see it work in slow motion. And as far as getting everything lined up is concerned, I've got to shoot it kind of weirdly uh, to get all of my body parts out from in front of the camera here. So we're just going to do this and uh, guns on fire. You might ask, Kurt, how secure is it? Well, let's uh, let's find out real quick. Okay, so we were able to pop it out to the uh, neutral position, as you can see, and let's uh, let's give it some more and see if we can get it to pop all the way out to the fire position. And the answer is no. It's still in the neutral position. So relatively secure it might pop out on you if you take a really hard hit i mean i'm giving them let's see i was doing about like that so enough to mark the the uh the wood of the tabletop yeah i would i would say that this is good and it's uh all metal and in, uh internals uh obviously molded on the outside uh to, for thermal non-conductance and all that sort of stuff but uh as far as uh, the trigger crank and its internal components are concerned, they're all made out of steel. So one of the things that's really interesting about having a crank-driven firearm is establishing a consistent cadence of fire. It, that's very different from a machine gun uh, because the machine gun's automatically doing it. You, the shooter, as you're going through the crank motion, have control of when that round is going to discharge. So it allows you to drive the sight. If you've ever fired a real Gatling gun, for instance, that's crank driven, you can just burn through ammo if you want to. But if you shoot the thing properly, then you can pretty much put consistent fire on target for a sustained period of time. And that's really what the Gatling gun was designed for, was sustained fire. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, because I uh, can't read, and I grabbed 300 blackout instead of 556, I only have 20 rounds left today. So I've got 20 rounds in this magazine and we're just gonna see if I can keep all the rounds on that target down there at 100 yards. And now we're just gonna rip it. You guys know what time it is it is time for critiques that's how we end every video here is with some kind of continuous improvement and i would start off by saying that i think this thing again performs really well from the prone position and it is my guess that that was what it was designed for it's really not meant to shoulder fire like this it's a little bit unwieldy particularly if you're wearing uh, clothing that is kind of slippery like this for instance I have really big hands and because of that this grip feels pretty slim to me I think the angle is good it is more of a vertical angle but as far as the profile of the grip itself so uh, to it, for it to be a a viable product it must first serve as a grip and it does serve as a grip and I would say that I find it a little bit thin I would like to see future offerings be available that are beefier, just to fill people's hands out a little bit. Now, one caveat on that, I understand the logic behind making it small first. It's a demonstration of technology because you'll have people say, well, you know, that thing is cool and all, but look how big and fat it is. Well, by making it fit in this little grip here, you've already demonstrated that it doesn't have to be big and bulky. But other than that, this thing is an absolute blast and I had a really good time shooting it, except for when the accountant sees the ammunition bill. It's gonna be bad.